Hello and welcome to Art for Everybody. My name is Evie Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany and my two little assistants here are called Pedro and Rosa. If you want to paint a tree, there are basically two problems you have to solve. The one is how to paint the trunk and the branches and the other one is how to paint the foliage. And in this video, I would like to show you how you can do that. So let me show you the material first I'm going to use. I have four different brushes. This is a filbert bristle brush number four. And this is the same one, but I have cut the top, as you can see. This is also a filbert, a smaller one, a number one, and a synthetic brush number four for the fine, the very fine details. A pencil, of course, for drawing the tree. And I'm going to use only very few colors. I have here a cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, and titanium white. You could do the same exercise with basically any other yellow, red or blue and get a different result, of course, but for learning how to mix the colors, using few colors is the easiest way. As a surface, I'm going to use a simple white cotton, not very spectacular. If you want, you can, of course, um, take any other surface as well, which uh, can take enough water. So, as I said before, you have basically two problems to solve when you want to paint a tree. And the first one is the trunk and the branches. For that, you will have to mix a sort of brownish, bluish, greenish tone. And we're going to try that first. I'm not going to elaborate on it, you know, do one trunk with one branch and if you've seen the video about drawing trees you of course remember the forming lines you can use to indicate in which direction your branch is going and you can of course imitate these forming lines with your brush strokes as well now if you have a cylinder and trunks and branches are nothing but cylinders. You have a very simple way of shading them. You start with the darkest color. And for that, I take the burnt sienna and add my blue. Now, if that is too brown for your taste, then just add the tiniest bit of white and then it will get a sort of grayish tone. And then we want to gradually get lighter because we want the light come from here. So we add a little more burnt sienna and the tiniest bit of white. And the more we get on the light side of our trunk, the more burnt sienna and white we add. And we always try to wipe that into the darker part of the trunk so that we get a very smooth transition from dark to light. If we want to have sort of highlights on our tree, what we do is we mix the burnt sienna with very little yellow so that the color as a whole gets warmer because on the light side we want warmer colors. And then we carefully wipe this lighter color into the color on the tree. Now, if we want a real highlight, 
you know, where the sun really hits the trunk, we add more white. Just be careful with the white because white tends to make warm colors look cold. So there has to be enough yellow and burnt sienna in it to make it look warm. And then we can have highlights on our trunk as well. And the same principle goes for the branch, of course. And after you've finished um, the blocking in of your main colors, you can take a smaller brush and do all the finer details on your trunk or your branches as you wish. If you want, you can indicate the bark with a very dark color. Just do your own experiments, it's not very difficult. The next thing you have to think about is how you can simplify the leaves. And you can either do that by just painting forms using dark and light color to express the light and the shade on your tree. Or if you want, you can try out different brushes and see if like, you know, small strokes might work for you. Or you can even take very fine brushes and make small, tiny leaves. Let them overlap and also express light and shade with your tiny brush strokes. This can all work. I'm going to paint my tree in an impressionistic style which starts with a brush stroke like this and then add some finer details with some of these brush strokes. A good trick for you as a beginner if you want to paint a tree is to take a photograph of your tree and then print it out and mark the main lines on your tree with a dark felt pen or something like that. As you can see, I've already done that and the outline of my tree is very irregular. The most common mistake of beginners is that they do the outline too regular. I'm not going to do it now, but they do not watch how the outline of the tree follows the branches and the leaves on the tree. And the next thing is that you also have bunches of leaves within the silhouette of your tree. And you have to concentrate and find out where these bunches are. And now if you watch closely, you can see that these bunches of leaves always have a light side, which is mostly on top of it. And they have a darker part, which is at the bottom of the bunches. And you will see that there are main bunches and there are not many of them. Mostly you have like uh, seven to 10 bunches and it's easier to concentrate on these main bunches of leaves and not try to make out all the smaller ones. And now with painting, we're going to do it like we paint any other object as well. We're going to paint the very dark parts, the middle ones and the lighter parts first. We're going to block in the colors first and then we are going to do the smaller details. And for this video as well, I'm going to use a photograph of a tree which my son Stephen took. And Stephen, you've met in the last tutorial about drawing trees. He's the one who invented Pedro and Rosa, and he's also 
the co-author of my books on drawing and painting in German. The drawing of the tree is very simple. As I said, you have a very irregular uh, outline. I usually start with the trunk or what I see of the trunk first and indicate where that is. And mind you, it doesn't have to look exactly like it does on the photograph. And then I roughly do the outline of my tree and I mark the main bunches of leaves that I see within the silhouette. Okay, and now I start with the darker parts of the leaves and for that I mix a dark green. Simply by using my Prussian blue and my cadmium yellow And the next step is that I do all the lighter parts of my leaves using lots of yellow and a tiny bit, a very tiny bit of my white. Because here goes the same as with the trunk and the branches. White makes the warmer colors cool very easily, so I'm very careful with that. And we're going to paint over this first layer of color anyway, so it's not that important that it's all correct right now. Now, in the shadow, we also have lighter parts on our leaves, but they are not quite as warm as the color on the light side of our tree. So if we want a lighter color here, we have to add more blue to our color and a little white because that makes the color go cool. So it's lighter, but it's cooler as the color on the light side of our tree. And then we have to add the color in between light and dark. And if you want, you can add a little of your reddish color. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep it very simple. But the brown or the red would also work. Okay, the next thing I do is I paint the background, which is a sky in this case, and the foreground which is this uh, brownish, yellowish grass in the foreground. And uh, with the sky, the only thing you have to know is that above you, the sky above you, which is closest to you, is more intense with color. So it has to be more blue. And if it uh, goes down to, to the horizon, it gets lighter because it's further away. And then you simply have to add more white. You can also do some of the clouds, of course, and you simply mix a darker color from burnt sienna and your blue. For the darker parts of your clouds. Now, what is important is that in this stage, you add the bits of the sky which you can see through your tree right now, because later we are going to paint over that again with some of uh, our detail work. And for the grass in the foreground, I simply take my cadmium yellow with burnt sienna and a tiny bit of the blue so that it gets darker. 
and I build the darker ground first and then go over it with the lighter with a lighter color. So the next thing I do is I do the trunk and the branches so that the whole of my painting is covered with this first layer of color. And the reason why artists do a block in first is that only if all colors cover your surface, you can judge whether the colors fit, whether they should be darker or lighter, or whether they go well together. And in this next stage, I'm simply going over my tree as a whole again, doing the same as I did before, but simply using a smaller brush so that, so that I can do a lot more details now. And I'm using the same colors that I used before. I use more warm colors in the light side, cooler colors in the dark side of my tree. And you can probably see that simply by painting over it again and again, you get all kinds of different shades of green. So I've done most of my work now and all that is left now are the final details and I'm going to use my small brush now to do the trunk and the branches again but this time making them even finer. And I can also add a little light, even though trunk and branches are in the shadow, to make it look more three-dimensional. And now I can do some of the uh, very tiny branches here that you see sometimes here as well. And I'm going to use very, very light and very dark color in this final stage because I want to get clear values between light and dark to make it look even more three-dimensional. My tree is finished. I hope you enjoyed watching the lesson and I surely hope that you will join me again next time when we are going to paint a full landscape together. Until then, have a good time and see you soon.